Today's talk focuses on the new entrance, Thor trucks, as well as the news from Germany of something called the e-scooter from Deutsche Post and the entry of Ford Motor Company in providing Deutsche Post with an XL version of their street scooter. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time on our channel, please take time to like and subscribe. If you're uh, returning, welcome back. I have decided to sort of move in different directions with the channel over time, as you guys have seen. Uh, in today's talk, I'm probably really focused on sort of two areas. First area was to review Thor's entry into the sort of trucking industry electric, uh, as well as what's going on in Germany with Deutsche Post and their partnership with Ford to produce a larger version of their street scooter. So my first section, I wanted to sort of look at what's going on with a company called Thor, T-H-O-R. According to news reports that have come out, there's a 25-year-old grad student who has a team of 17 people and they've been able to produce a kind of a working prototype that's been approved for tests on California roads. Now, I thought this was really interesting because it turns out that evidently Tesla has not been approved on California roads, nor has uh, uh, the Nikola truck, obviously. And so I just thought that was fascinating that a company that didn't have any products out yet already had a, a road test approvals. But I, I expect that Tesla's approval will be forthcoming rapidly, uh, given the schedule they're on and, frankly, the quality of the trucks we've seen. So one of our most sort of entertaining and repeated uh, discussions has been focused on what's going on with Nikola. Nikola indicated that Tesla is engaged in fraud. But at the same time, we still haven't seen a Nikola truck that we can reference that's in motion other than the beautiful prototypes that they have pictures of and a list of all the great partners that they have. So this sort of brings up an interesting discussion question mark, which is um, kind of what's going on with Nikola and are those guys going to die quickly? Now, in the case of Thor, um, from what I can see, they do not have all the great marketing both materials as well as, uh, you know, beautiful stage presences that Nikola has produ uh, produced. But if we look at both the videos from the news, I think CBS News had a special on them, along with what's going on with the vehicle being actually drivable. Uh, I think it's very impressive what they're doing, and I'm hope hopeful that they're able to enter the space at the largest zone that they're focused on successfully and provide some more options for folks that are looking for solutions here where the really only viable game in town is Tesla and it's quite a while before there'll be scale volumes of Tesla available. Hence Tesla has been really trying to encourage startups like this to get going and be successful. So I uh, would say that you know, I've, I've seen video of the truck in action. I've seen the interviews. My read of them is that the product looks pretty good. It seems to perform pretty well on the highway. Uh, the nightmare issue is that you have a lot of really large players that are involved in trying to produce here as well. And everyone, including people like Daimler-Benz, etc., has been stuck at the point of having the right battery to allow the weight to be low enough for the freight weight of the vehicle to be adequate uh, to make it cost effective to do the long range truck. So one, it is impressive that uh, Thor has a product out. Two, there's big discussions about them getting to market prior to Tesla in 2019. Um, three, I think it's possible that anybody can get a truck together and to market by 2019. The problem that lurks is where are you going to get batteries for it? And where are you going to get batteries at scale? Because if you want to buy a few of them to test out a vehicle, 
there's no problem with doing that. The bigger problem is if you want to actually start building large numbers of vehicles, you're going to need a supplier. And most, if not all, the suppliers, supplies and suppliers of batteries are being bought up by the big auto manufacturers and their supplies that they're produced. There's an, a pecking order of people based on the number of batteries you might be purchasing. And I'm hopeful that Thor can figure this out. But uh, it's a nightmare problem for companies hundreds of times their size currently. So it'll be interesting to see if and when they ever get to market. This also brings a question of to market as to what's going on with Nikola. Because in the case of both Tesla and Thor, we're seeing on the road product that people can test and drive, etc. And in the case of Nikola, they're claiming Tesla is engaging in fraud but we haven't actually seen any products that they've produced that we're able to drive or see anyone driving or have customers driving. So I think this is part of the reason why we're starting to see this whole thing come apart. The final note I'll make on Nikola um, references some research I did uh, on the fact that Walmart actually produced something called the Wave. And I thought the truck was impressive. Um, they got 22 partners together around the world. They produced a vehicle uh, that was running um, miles per gallon, around 13 miles per gallon, given a number of innovations that they did, including a carbon fiber, fiber 4,000 pound reducing rear to the, to the semi-trailer. And so because Walmart had helped put this together, there was a sense for me after I learned about it that this thing was going to be great uh, because you have a large user of trucks in Walmart helping to put together a kind of vehicle that would help improve all the form factors. And the whole thing went nowhere and I was kind of wondering why and then finally realized that you know the trucks cost when they sort of put it together and had a finished product in 2014 was $385,000 per. So the problem that popped up was, you know, if everything else costs $125,000 and you have a $385,000 truck, even if the fuel economy is better, it's just hard for anybody to justify that number, including Walmart. So the project kind of died and I'm impressed that many of the sort of innovative aspects of that truck were actually picked up in the brand new Tesla. So I think that's awesome that that happened. Now, I'm, you know, I guess we could dive into more of the Thor versus Tesla versus um, Nikola discussion, but frankly, uh, there isn't a whole lot more to report until Nikola actually finally delivers a working prototype versus discussions of a really great truck that they haven't nobody has seen or they haven't produced yet. So that allows us to sort of finish this portion of our discussion and move on to our dialogue on something called the Street, street Scooter and the Street Scooter XL. It turns out that in Germany, I'm kind of focused on them as a country because Daimler-Benz is uh, the sort of number one competitor Tesla in terms of having great products and great engineering to compete and they're actually ready to start taking orders and then delivery in a year or so of quantity numbers of electric trucks mostly in that hundred mile range. Now what's interesting is that there's a company called Deutsche Post and the whole German auto industry and manufacturing industries work closely together with the government for job reasons and a whole bunch of other reasons. But one of the most amazing developments that's occurred in my mind is the fact that the post office, Deutsche Post, which owns DHL, is now producing its own electric vehicles. They started off with a concept called the street scooter, which is about a 50 mile um, range, sort of small postal delivery vehicle, a photo of which I'll put over my shoulder. That vehicle uh, now has about 10,000 sort of iterations sitting and, and servicing customers range, uh, I think 50 kilometers, maybe 25, 30 miles. Um, as you can see, capacity is not that huge about what a one postal carrier would carry, but there's a real focus in Europe, particularly Germany, of getting rid of electrics in the center of those cities and eliminating the pollution and other things that go with it. <clears throat> I'm also impressed by Germany because recently 
through their wind power, they were able to get to zero electricity consumption for a certain period of time. And I just thought that was really amazing to see an industrial country sort of aggressively move towards uh, helping the, uh, both their economy as well as the environment do well and be focused on that. So the whole street scooter thing is fascinating to me because Deutsche Post went to all three major German manufacturers, asked them to deliver you know, a small delivery vehicle that they could use. None of those guys came up with anything. Deutsche Post went ahead and put together their own specs and started building their own vehicle, to which they had a VW got pissed and um, said, you guys should have told us you know, what you wanted or you know, and they just got sick of the delays and built their own. So, and this vehicle, I think, is impressive that it's gotten done. They're producing about 5,000 of them a year uh, now, and then they're going to start selling to others soon, which I think is great for everybody involved, and hopefully the U.S. can get in the mix with orders and purchases there as well. This brings up of our discussion of Ford, of all companies entering this business, Ford won a contract to produce 2,500 what are called XL street scooters. So instead of the capacity of what one mailman might ca carry, they are offering a small delivery van capable of as long as a 100, 125 mile range that, you know, is kind of a large size van capacity uh, for package deliveries, etc. And so Ford in Europe is starting to make some noise when it comes to EVs, plug-ins, and electrics. And I'm sort of blown away because the CEO of Ford got fired in the U.S. for their lack of response to autonomy and electric. And now in Europe, Ford is delivering a product and has won a contract to do so. Um, elements of this are kind of interesting. And Daimler went ahead and acquired one of the Ford products and has taken it apart to determine specs so that they can be ready for that kind of competition. Um, the vehicle is not offered in the United States, which I think is amazing because the headquarters is here and there's a lot of customers across UPS and other delivery entities that would love to have a hold of it. Um, and so I'm sort of blown away. One, that they got it done. Two, they're not selling in the United States. And three, it's a good enough product for Deutsche Post to not um, produce or deliver it themselves, but work off that Ford platform to get that product out and into the marketplace. So kudos to Ford, kudos to DHL Deutsche Post. Now, all of you may be aware that DHL owns, um, uh, Deutsche Post owns DHL in the United States. They're also uh, scheduled to take delivery in Canada of 15 of Tesla's brand new trucks as well once they're available. So. I think that um, I'm impressed by what's going on with the post office in Germany and their uh, aggressive efforts to make change and be a part of change forward progress for all of us. I, you know, sort of final thoughts today on this whole thing is that um, I really hope that uh, we can see some U.S. movement towards the type of activities we're seeing from Deutsche Post and others to make a difference in this arena. Love to have all your comments and statements. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please be respective. We are definitely working on our sound quality through a lot of methods and plan to have major change made ASAP. So thank you all for the comments regarding that. Happy holidays and thanks once again for joining us. Tschüss, Max gut, au revoir, Lagi Hoda Hafez.